Welcome back to Studio Chatter. It's been a few years since we last saw our next guest, but local girl does good. Welcome Whitney Lusk back to the program. Whitney has just released a new album and we're excited to hear all about it. Welcome back, Whitney. Welcome, Hello. Whitney. Thanks for having me back. And I'm so lucky. I get to meet you for the first time, so everything is new to me. Oh, <laughs> you are awesome. so lucky. It's been yeah. three years, really. Yeah. Wow, time flies. It doesn't seem like it was Can that you just long give ago, us a, re a quick just a recap, recap of your last three years? Um, I got married in the last Congratulations. three years. Congratulations. But with music, I've released two albums, I think, now. Um, wow. And I had a publishing deal in Nashville, but then it fell through because of COVID. I was, oh, that was one of my yeah. questions. Like, I was hoping you weren't going to say oh. that. So, but now I'm here and I'm still here. So let's go back to that. Yeah. How did the pandemic affect that deal? So I go to a songwriters convention every October called mm -hmm. Durango Songwriters Expo. And um, they just have high ups in the industry that right. go there. And there was a guy there who I played a song, one of them that I'll play here tonight. And he really liked it and so he offered a deal and when we were in the middle of like doing the contract and stuff um, he was like I actually can't offer you it anymore because we lost the funding because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So this would have been like March time frame? Yeah it probably would we were planning on moving come like August-ish. Like moving for the deal or you and your husband moving to Nashville? To Nashville. <gasps> oh, wow. Whitney that so would have been. A, it was a wow. thing but no, it's not. <laughs> it's a thing again, though. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. We'll see. I mean, hopefully, because I I made a lot of good contacts just mm -hmm. going out there and writing all the time, um, but right now there's not any. So options. you referenced the Durango Festival. So are you talking like Durango, Colorado? Colorado? So they used to do it in Durango. Now they no hold way. it in Boulder. Okay. Okay. Oh, but Boulder. Still, yeah. Colorado. Okay. Yeah. But it used to be held in Durango. That's why they called it. That. And what do they do there? They just get um, they get publishing, like publishers from different publishing companies in Nashville, and they'll have some um, heads of like studios, and they get them mm -hmm. from the pop genre or the pop industry and uh -huh. the country industry. So they ha have some from LA. They have some from Nashville. Okay. And you just get. Um, you get put in panels and you get to shop your songs and then you'll get a showcase if wow. they like you and you get to play your song for everybody. That, that is so sounds awesome. truly like, intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> it is. How many years have you done that? I've actually been doing that since I was 16. Okay, so, so you don't get that like no, jitters, jitters or not do any, you? Not anymore okay. just because they all know me pretty well there mm -hmm. and so it's kind of just like I'm playing with friends, you know. Um, that's nice. But there's definitely some people. There's a guy named Big Al. Uh -huh. He is actually <laughs> the person scary. that found, I know, <laughs> he found Megan Trainer at this expo. Oh, okay. And so he's pretty intimidating. Is he? He's like, he's older, yeah. but he's, he's big. And he's like an incredible songwriter. He has okay. tons and tons of hits. So. so all of you that go there take your own songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just for songwriters. So. That's so cool. Yeah. So well, now what are you doing now to transition from that deal not going through to pushing your career, whatever you're trying? So I released this album and I'm just trying to push that as much as possible and get lots of streams on Spotify and I stuff like that. Is that how you do it? Is that like the main platform right now? Yeah, because okay. streaming is, and streaming is not the best, <laughs> but right. it does it and it gets your music in front of people. You can shop your songs to like playlist curators and stuff. Um, but that all, that's a lot of work. It seems I like a lot of work. I just wanted to ask you, like, how much work do you put into this weekly? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a day a in the life. I mean, I do have like a day job too. Okay. So I try and do it as much as I can. I have one day a week that's just like specifically for music. Okay. And then at night when I get home from work and stuff, I try and record new demos of new songs to send to publishing um, companies and stuff too. But with this one, it's really all about like promoting it on social media. Mm -hmm. Because right now you can't really go play shows. You can't do anything that way. So it's right. all via social media and through Spotify and random stuff like that. 
So this is an acoustic album, mm -hmm. and certainly you probably have a lot of things that have been inspiring you since you've been kind yeah. of cooped up at home <laughs> or things that, that have been happening to you. Do you have a favorite song on the album? My favorite song is actually the one that's the title track, the anthems, and that's the song, so it's Anthems of My Life, and that's the song that they really liked at this Durango Expo. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote it with my guitarist, Dan Featherstone, he'll be here playing guitar for me, but that's why I wrote the whole album is I loved like old school classic country music mm -hmm. and that's not quite a thing anymore mm -hmm. and I really miss that and so I wrote that song about what I grew up listening to and then all the songs on the album are just stories about my life because those are the songs that I fell in love Now, I've known you for a long time. Would <laughs> I happen to be in any story that I would recognize? <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe in a few. And she's referencing closely. Back. For sure. And your <laughs> name might be dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that, but like a dear neighbor or something like that. Yes. A very maybe. popular influencer. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, if not now, a future album. Yes, and I'll come back. Maybe and studio I'll... chatter. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. We, you might need some help. We can we write could a song you. together. There yes. you go. Uh -huh. We can't sing, but we can write. I'm sure yes. can. <laughs> so what's your favorite thing about your industry and what you're doing? Um, honestly, I used to always love the singing part that was like ever since I was eight years old mm -hmm. I've been taking voice lessons and I just love singing and that's still my favorite thing but in the past like year I really have grown more of a love for songwriting just because I've got the chance to write with some really incredible songwriters and the ability to tell a story even yeah. if it's not yours and make somebody feel something it's just really cool. It's a really fun talent and gift to have, I guess. Definitely. So songwriting has become one of my favorite parts of it. <laughs> and when you say you sit down and work with someone, is it like sitting down side by side and writing something out and just bouncing ideas off of each other? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, lately, you know, it's all over like Zoom, <laughs> Zoom. and Skype. Normally. Yeah, but um, yeah, you just go into a room with a stranger nine times out of ten mm -hmm. and you just tell them about your life and, and they start writing or you write or yeah I mean there was one lady I wrote with in Nashville her name was Leslie Satcher she wrote Troubadour by George Strait mm -hmm. and Ain't Nothing To It by Cody Johnson she's incredible and she every songwriter has a different way of writing and okay. with her I walked in and I was just like telling her stories about my husband or the first song we wrote I was telling her stories about the plane ride there and she was like she just came up with a melody and then she came up with like a first line and it was just like bam 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 and she was just wow. amazing but then there's other ones that I walk in and I have an idea and somebody just runs with it okay. and it just really depends on the writer but it's it's really interesting oh it's, I bet wow. like so creative like you so think creative. about art being like a visual but music is that creativity oh, yeah. in here and in here yeah. I feel like it's yeah. really fun all right, well, let's get right to it. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll twist Whitney's arm so she'll perform for us on Studio Chatter.